Section 5.4, Sum and Difference Identities for Sine and Tangent. These are going to be very similar to the previous section, which was the sum and difference identity for cosine. Here are identities for the sum and difference of sine and the identity for sum and difference of tangent. These will be on the next slides so we can review them as we solve the problems. Our first example is we want to use the identities to find the exact value for, and we have sine of 105. What we need to do is to determine two values that we know from the unit circle that either are going to subtract to give us 105 or add to give us 105. Here we know that we can use the sine of 60 plus 45. We know these values in our unit circle and the sum of those is 105. And that would turn out to be using our identity for the sum of sine identity which I know will be sine of 60 times cosine of 45 plus the cosine of 60 times the sine of 45. We know that the sine of 60 from the unit circle is the square root of 3 over 2. The cosine of 45 is the square root of 2 over 2 plus the cosine of 60 is 1 half and the sine of 45 is the square root of 2 over 2. When I simplify, that's the square root of 6 over 4 plus the square root of 2 over 4. These are common denominator, so I can simplify that to be the square root of 6 plus the square root of 2. They're not like terms, all over 4. Our next example is the sine of 75. We want to find the exact value. Here we know that the sine of 45 plus the sine of 30 gives us the value of 75 degrees. But I know these values on the unit circle. Again, I'm going to use my sum identity for sine, which is going to be the sine of 45, cosine of 30, plus cosine of 45, and the sine of 30. Using the unit circle, we know that the sine of 45 is the square root of 2 over 2. The cosine of 30 is the square root of 3 over 2 plus the cosine of 45 is the square root of 2 over 2 and the sine of 30 is 1 half. Now we simplify. I have the square root of 6 over 4 plus the square root of 2 over 4. Since we have common denominators, I can simplify to the square root of 6 plus the square root of 2 all over 4. Here I'm going to find the exact value of tangent of 7 pi over 12. It might be easier to convert 2 degrees, which would give us the tangent of 105. Using unit circle values that I know, that can give me the tangent of 60 plus 45. I can convert those back to radians, which would give us the tangent of pi thirds plus pi fourths. I can still use the degrees on my unit circle to get the values, but I'm going to use the sum identity, which is the tangent of pi thirds plus the tangent of pi fourths over 1 minus the tangent of pi thirds times the tangent of pi fourths. Let's find the values from the unit circle, which is going to give me the tangent of pi thirds is going to give me the square root of 3, plus the tangent of pi fourths is 1, over 1 minus the tangent of pi thirds is the square root of 3, times the tangent of pi fourths, which is 1. 
And I simplify, that's going to give me the square root of 3 plus 1 over 1 minus the square root of 3. I can't leave it in this form. I'm not allowed to have the square root of the denominator. And since this is an expression, I need to find the conjugate, which means I multiply by 1 plus the square root of 3 over 1 plus the square root of 3. I'll FOIL the numerator, so the first term is square root of 3 times 1, which is the square root of 3. My outer term is the square root of 3 times the square root of 3, which is 3. My inner term is 1 times 1, which is 1. And my last term is 1 times the square root of 3, which is the square root of 3. When I FOIL the denominator, my first term is 1 times 1, which is 1. My inner term is a negative square root of 3. My outer term is a positive square root of 3. Since they're like terms, they drop out. And my last term is a minus square root of 3 times square root of 3, which is 3. Simplify the numerator. Gives me 4 plus 2 square roots of 3, combining my like terms. And in my denominator, I'm going to get a negative 2. I can factor the numerator, which is going to give me 2 times 2 plus the square root of 3, all over a negative 2. And when that drops out, that's going to give me a negative times 2 plus the square root of 3, or negative 2 minus square root of 3. Again, I want to use identities to find the exact value. I can use this expression and match it up to one of my identities, which would be my difference identity for sine, which would be sine of 90 cosine of 135, which would make 90 my A and 135 my B. So I can just substitute that into this expression, which is sine of 90 minus 135. When I simplify, that gives me the sine of a negative 45. And I can use the negative angle identity, which is the negative sine of 45 degrees. Now from the unit circle, I know the sine of 45 degrees is the square root of 2 over 2, and I can just bring down the negative. Therefore, my solution is negative square root of 2 over 2. In this example, I want to use identities to write each expression as a single function of x or theta. And that would depend on the expression with our trig function here. It's in terms of theta, so all I want is a theta with my function. So I'm going to use my sum identity for sine. That's going to give me the sine of 30 cosine of theta plus cosine 30 times the sine of theta. Simplifying by the unit circle, I know the sine of 30 is a half cosine of theta plus the cosine of 30 is the square root of 3 over 2 sine of theta. And now this is represented as a single function of theta. I'm going to perform similar operations with the tangent of 45 plus theta. I'm going to use my sum identity for tangent which will give me the tangent of 45 plus the tangent of theta over 1 minus the tangent of 45 times the tangent of theta. I know the tangent of 45 is 1 plus the tangent of theta over 1 minus the tangent of 45 is 1. 1 times the tangent of theta gives me the tangent of theta. Again, written as a single function of just theta. My next example, I have the sine of 180 cosine of theta plus the cosine of 180 times the sine of theta. By my unit circle, I know the sine of 180 is 0 times the cosine of theta plus 
the cosine of 180 is a negative 1 times the sine of theta. Simplifying, this would cancel out, leaving me with a negative sine of theta. In my last example, I want to use the given information to find the sine of a plus b, the tangent of a plus b, and the quadrants of a and b from this given information. I'm given the sine of a equals 4 fifths, and a is between pi halves and pi, therefore it's in quadrant 2. I'm given cosine b is a negative 5 over 13, and b is between pi and 3 pi over 2, therefore quadrant 3. But this part will be determined after I solve for sine of a plus b and tangent of a plus b. Recall when I find the sine of a plus b, I need the sine of a, which I have, but I also need the cosine of a. So therefore, I need to determine the cosine of a. I also need the cosine of b, which I have, but I need the sine of b. So I need to find the sine of b. To do that, I'm going to use our Pythagorean identity. So I'm going to use the Pythagorean identity for angle A. I know the sine of A is 4 fifths. When I square that, that gives me 16 over 25 plus cosine squared A equals 1. I solve for a cosine squared A. I get 1 minus 16 over 25. That gives me the cosine squared A equals a positive 9 25ths when I find like terms. Now I take the square root of both sides, that gives me the cosine of A equals 3 fifths. But recall that I am in quadrant 2, and cosine in quadrant 2 is negative. I need to find the sine of B in similar fashion, use the Pythagorean identity on angle B. Therefore I have the sine squared b plus cosine squared b, which I know is a negative 5 thirteenths, but when I square that, that's 25 over 169, which equals 1. Sine squared b is equal to 1 minus 25 over 169. As I did here, I found common denominators, which was 25 over 25. My common denominator here is 169 over 169, which will equal 169 minus 25, which is 144 over 169. Take the square root of both sides, I get sine of b equal to 12 over 13. I am in quadrant 3, and in quadrant 3, sine is negative. For each, I also have to find the tan of A plus B. Therefore, I need to find the tangent of A and the tangent of B. To find the tangent of A, I know the tangent of A equals the sine of A over the cosine of A. The sine of A is given to be 4 fifths. Cosine of B, I determine to be a negative 3 fifths. And when I simplify, I get the tangent of A to equal a negative 4 thirds. Now I can determine the tangent of B because I know that is equal to the sine of B over the cosine of B. I determined the sine of B to be a negative 12 over 13. I'm given the cosine of B to be a negative 5 over 13. And when I simplify, that's going to give me a positive 12 fifths. Now I've found all the information I need to calculate sine of a plus b and tangent of a plus b. So let's go to the next slide. Here I want to find the sine of a plus b. I wrote our solutions down for our cosine of a and our sine of b. Now we just have to substitute in. 
I need the sine of A, which I know is 4 fifths, cosine of B, which is a negative 5 thirteenths, plus cosine of A, which is a negative 3 fifths, and I need the sine of B, which is a negative 12 thirteenths. Now I simplify each expression. I'm going to get 4 fifths times a negative 5 thirteenths. I get a negative 20 over 65. Plus, negative times a negative is a positive. That's going to give me 36 over 65. And when I simplify that, that's going to give me a positive 16 over 65. To find the tan of A plus B, I'm just going to substitute. These are the values I calculated for tangent of A and tangent of B. I substitute in. The tangent of A is a negative 4 thirds plus the tangent of B is 12 fifths over 1 minus the tangent of A is a negative 4 thirds. The tangent of B is 12 fifths. Common denominators for the numerator and simplifying, my common denominator is going to give me 15. That's going to give me a negative 20. And also over here, when I multiply by 3, a 36, which is going to give me 16 over 15 when I simplify. Over 1 plus, when I multiply these two, I'm going to get 48 over 15. And I simplify again, that's 16 over 15. Find the sum of 1 plus 40 over 15. My common denominator is 15, which is going to give me 63 over 15. I'm going to invert and multiply, which is going to give me my solution of 16 over 63. And that's positive. So my two solutions, which are the sine of A plus B, which is positive, and the tangent of A plus B, which are positive. Therefore, since they're both positive, the only quadrant that A plus B can be in is in quadrant number one. That is the only location where both sine and tangent are both positive. 